The testing with the e-boost has all gone a bit pear shape. You can see here, that button works. That button works. That one doesn't. I've tried using contact cleaner. I've left this thing in the airing cupboard for days, trying to dry out. Basically, this was lashed up on the car, like um, you've seen, when the car was under a cover and it rained. Now, rain didn't get in on this, but obviously where it was damp, that was enough to bugger this thing up. So I can't change the settings on here. So basically I've got a, a virtually bricked Evo Boost 2, which is a bit of a bugger. So I'm going to have to scrap using this thing and look at a different way of sorting this out. Yeah, I've had a bit of a U-turn with the boost control project. Instead of using discrete stuff, I decided to go down the route of the Arduino, uh, which means I can program it, uh, which will make it much, much easier to make changes. I've not done any coding for a long, long time, but it, it turns out it is fairly straightforward. And there's quite a lot of useful stuff online. So at the moment, I have a program written I've written a program that changes the PWM, which if you remember is pulse width modulation, depending on what gear we're in. So at the moment, because I haven't been able to get any results from the e-boost, because the e-boost got slightly damp when it was outside on the car under a cover and doesn't work anymore. That lot of good that is. I don't know what the pulse width modulation needs to be, so basically I've got it set at the moment, so I've got every I've got it goes from ten percent to sixty uh, percent. So my circuit at the moment consists of a little pot which is pretending to be the gears, and circuit. Um, this big LED comes on when it's in neutral. The little LED flashes uh, in sort of time with the solenoid. So if I plug it in to 12 volts, you can hear the solenoid ticking away and it's LED flashing. So if I change this to pretend to be in a different gear, so that would be first. neutral so when we're in neutral we open. a couple of little things I found whilst doing this that might be useful for anyone else uh, looking at the same sort of thing is the solenoid although um, all the blurb I read said to set it to about 25 30 Hertz what I found was is uh, at the shorter pulse width so when we're down at about a 10% duty cycle it actually wouldn't have stayed on so the minimum time was about 12 milliseconds for it to switch one direction to the other on the solenoid um, so I couldn't do a 10 hertz because the duration has to be sorry a, a 10 I couldn't do 10% duty cycle at 25 hertz because the switching time for on is just too short so what i've ended up having to do is at 10 and 20 percent the frequency is about 10 hertz and about 15 hertz we're all right once we get above there one of the uh, neat ways of helping to develop the software or fault find bug find on there as well is you can do this monitor thing so at the moment the um is plugged in to the pc you can see there, so a neutral light's on. At the moment, that's telling me five, which means there's five volts coming out of my pretend gear sensor, and it's in neutral. So if I just turn this a little bit, you can hear that's changed. Now in sixth gear,
can hear there where I've had to do that at a much lower frequency for first. So the next stage is, is to try this on the car. So I need to put the circuit onto one of these uh, prototype boards. Basically I've got to solder it all in here. So that's the next job. So these boards just have loads and loads of holes in that are the same pitch as the um, pins. The standard thing, I don't know, two point something millimeters. So we just put that in, leave ourselves a few pins. Either I'm gonna put that into the USBs near the edge. Leave ourselves a few pins either side, so we can solder in other things in and around. And on the back, you can see it's just copper all the way across. So where I've put. Arduino in there. I'll just need to cut those between us. We'll be short across the pins, which this is not going to be much good. in between. I have a good visual check. Oh, there's no copper anywhere along there, so that's all good. Then just past the end we'll put in our transistor. We've got a transistor on there because the output power from the Arduino isn't enough to drive the solenoid. So that is kind of like a, a step up sort of thing. So next we're soldering a little current limiting resistor for the LEDs. Because if you put LEDs straight on the pins, they're virtually short circuit and won't do anything any good. Okay, so I'm bound to have forgotten something. What is it? So I've had another slight change of plan. Started off using this Arduino micro board. What I didn't notice when I was looking at the spec, there's I don't know, probably about a dozen different sorts of these boards that all have different numbers of pins and that. It will use the same programs and that. And they all seem to be 5 or 12 volt supply, so I thought that's fine ordered this micro one up because it's nice and small and it's got what I need didn't notice that out of all the boards this is the only one that has to have a 5 volt supply so I tested this with a solenoid which is obviously 12 volts so I put 12 volts on the supply and got a small puff of smoke after a couple of minutes and obviously it's had enough of that so I've now ordered a bigger one. Uh, we've got this Leonardo, um, which can take 12 volts. And I've done a little bit more coding as well. So if I just show you that. So I've done a bit of coding now for uh, gear position. So if I plug this in, we can see what's going on. I'll plug it in to 12 volts and it won't smoke. So you can hear there ticking away is my solenoid on the LED there. So we're in first gear. So if I move my pretend switch round, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth, at the moment this is just set so each one is changing the um what we call the duty cycle so in first gear it's 10 percent and then going to 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent 60 percent 
which is how I'm going to try it on the car with this switch before connecting it to the gearbox as I can see the effect of the change of duty cycle um, to the boost setter. So now what I've got to do is put that lot onto that board that I talked about before. What I've actually done is I've bought two of these uh, Arduinos like this, so about um, I think about fifteen pounds each. So I can just leave this one here as a kind of a development one, and then I've got one that once I'm happy it's working on the bench when I change programs and things, I can then just flash the program into the one on there. So time to do a bit more soldering. I'm not going to bother videoing all this soldering because I don't suppose the last lot of video and I did was very exciting and it takes time. And I want to get going because I'm now getting impatient. Here's my little safety tip for the day. When you're using a sharp knife, always cut away from yourself. Don't cut towards your own finger. So I've now hardwired onto this new type of Arduino board um, using a second board so I can keep that one as a prototype to test any software up updates and things I do. So this I've semi ruggedized you'll see on here um, it's just basically that's just uh, heat glue stuff um, it's quite a good way of just securing cables because obviously all the vibration it can fracture the solder joints it's not ideal but it, it's quite good for a sort of a semi-permanent thing. Then I've got a bit of a lead on to the for the solenoid, and then a fairly long ribbon cable going on to the display, so I can have this display in front of me. So when we're in neutral, we have that. That that's it doesn't show very well on this camera, but that's then bright red to tell me I'm in neutral, and just got three lines across on there. That brings us to the end of uh, this part of the video. The next stage is going to be me just fitting that up on the car and let's get these off. <coughs> I can see what I'm doing now. Uh, yeah, so the next stage would be me fitting up on the car as a sort of a temporary fit to try it and getting out on the road and seeing what effect each of those pulse width or sorry those those duty cycles, the 10%, 20%, what effect that has on the turbo pressure. Once I've got that information, I can then start working out what duty cycle I need for what boost for what gear. Um, I am planning on having a switch on there so that I can switch between, say, a completely off setting. Um, maybe one for wet, not that I go in the wet, but just if I ever get caught, a sort of a road setting and a track setting. Yeah. So, if you want to find out how that bit goes... Best thing to do is subscribe to the channel so when that video comes up, YouTube will tell you. See you soon, bye. Hi, thanks for getting to the end of the video. If you're not already subscribed, please do so now. Just hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell button and that way YouTube will tell you when there's any new videos. We've got some big plans ahead for the channel including possibly a car build from scratch. So if you want to get involved with that, now's the time to subscribe. Cheers then, bye.